we could all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Reverend Paul would please give us the invocation. Let us pray. Holy and eternal God, we ask you to be with this gathering of city council members tonight. Fill us with your guiding light as we consider all the ways to better the lives of our residents. Let the care for our common property, especially water lines, roads, and all the infrastructure show our concern for one another. Let the people who are planning improvements to our parks and area of recreation provide places of employment for all our residents. May we be mindful of those with disabilities as we make improvements to our facilities. And especially tonight, we recall those who have died. We remember Lori Coates, a faithful attendee of our concerts. We remember Mike Carey, a beloved teacher in our schools. And we remember all of those that you hold deep in your hearts. Lord, keep us ever mindful of the poor, those in need, and especially our children and all we say and do. And we ask you, Lord, to look over the fire department and police force and all the cherished servants of our city, especially these members of council and our mayor. For we make this prayer knowing you, O oh God, walk with us. Amen. Amen. Just a few things that I'd like. Uh, oh, yeah, why don't we do a roll call? Good idea. Hey, let's do that. <laughs> Councilpersons Bear? Here. Dupre? Here. Ross? Here. Salcedo? Here. Soar? Here. Tobin? Here. And Mayor Higgins? Here. Thank you. Okay, sorry about that. And now uh, just a few comments. Um, I want to congratulate the, the, the firefighters. They got a, a big grant, um, and I want to congratulate them. Um, uh, the regional assistance for firefighters it helps pays for uh, nozzles and other applications and uh, I think that's probably pretty important that they have nozzles so <laughs> um, it would help to put out a fire um, and I just again uh, shows that uh, you know our fire department is out there it's just like our other department heads going out there and going after the things uh, the grants and thank you guys um, Remind everybody this weekend is the free garage sale day. I remind you all you have to still follow all the rules for a garage sale. You're not supposed to be putting your signs in the middle of Fort Street or just in your front yard. And uh, please take care of your yard and put everything back away when you're done. Um, I'd like to remind everybody Thursday night will be the last of the summer concert. Um, uh, please come out, have a good time. It's been a, a great concert all, all summer long, and it's uh, looking forward to it. Um, we have uh, the, it's turning into uh, winter, and it's turning into fall, and uh, there's a uh, the Parks and Recreation have announced uh, a plethora of things that are starting all over again. It's that season. So I'm going to run down a few of them real quick. Um, Nightmare on Ford Street will be October 7th. That'll be, um, there'll be bands there. There will be Trunk or Treat. Uh, there's going to be story time for kids. Um, just some great fun stuff. On September 23rd, they're going to have the movie in the uh, park. They're going to be doing that at the Ice Arena. They got three or four different kind of yoga classes coming up. They got the pumpkin smash coming up. They have a uh, hustler class, learn how to dance, I guess. Um, cookie decorating class. Open skating is starting again. Um, Lincoln Park Dance Company is looking for some uh, kids who want to learn to dance. Um, the body shape for women class is starting and of course um, skate company is now open up and ready for uh, to start skating again so just uh, the, the fall is here and let's embrace
Okay, now uh, resolve that the following items listed under the consent agenda be approved by the president of the to the mayor and council. Approve the minutes of the regular meeting of August 21st. Approve the minutes of the special collective bargaining on August 28th. Approve the account and claims payable. <coughs> Approve the block party for 100 block of Josephine. Solicit bid for the demolition contractor. Solicit bids for the up, upfitting of the police vehicles. Solic solicit bid for courthouse doors. Solicit bids for recruitment services. Solicit, no, I'm sorry, schedule public hearing for the DPB properties. Schedule a public hearing for Capper. Schedule a study session, Ecorse Creek res res restoration. restoration, sorry, and accept the grant association uh, for the firefighters, as I spoke of a little bit earlier. I'll move. Support. Councilpersons Tobin? Yes. Ross? Yes. Bear? Yes. Dupre? Yes. Salcedo? Yes. Soar? Yes. And Mayor Higgins? Yes. Thank you. First thing up will be uh, the resolution to reject uh, the first rates for properties. I'll let's turn that over to the city manager. Yes, thank you, Mayor. So um, this is the first right of refusal program where uh, the city from the county will purchase um, tax foreclosed properties, bundle them together, and then um, put them out to bid as a package. Um, the intention there, some of these properties are in better shape than others, and we want to make sure somebody takes them all and we're not left holding the, uh, the worse off properties. Um, different changes to the way the program can operate. Um, is that we basically had to set the price um, based off of what we paid for and any administrative costs there couldn't be any kind of <coughs> any the city traditionally has not been able to to incur a profit on this program but we had to be very strict with how we set it up so this year um, to put together the package we actually were looking at the proposals themselves um, we wanted the developers to tell us what they were going to do with the properties so that we could, uh, based on a criteria, select um, who had the best project because um, everybody was going to be bidding the exact same amount of money. It wasn't going to be a price-based bid. Uh, unfortunately, we only received one bid, and uh, the bidder didn't actually fulfill the requirements as based on the bid, so we would like to reject it and put it back, put it back out to bid. To the chair. We have to me. read the resolution first, okay. and then we will I'll come to you first. Resolve that the Mayor Council reject the bid received for the 2023 right, first right to refusal properties and re-solicit bids. I'll move. Support. And I believe Mr. Zor has some questions. I, I just had one, to your, no, your Honor. I, um, to our city manager, uh, when you put together the numbers for that project how did you put together those numbers so the numbers came from the price we paid um, for the property from the county uh, which worked out to the back taxes uh, we included any kind of outstanding water bills ordinance fees and then I think we uh, Carrie correct me if I'm wrong but we had a flat administrative fee per property of 2500 I think it's either 25 or 15 I don't yeah. remember what we settled okay. pretty nominal to, to cover the cost of us putting together the bids reviewing all of that thank you I to appreciate that to the chair was the bidder given a chance to remedy the shortcomings he'll have a chance now with the resolicitation okay what, what's going to be happening to these properties while this bid process is going forward is someone going to be taking care of it or is that the city's responsibility it is the city's responsibility we are the property owners so we have our um our contractor our uh u.s or united landscape has been out there on these properties there's making no sure properties. we've had a couple that have slipped through and we've had to remind the contractor they had to be out okay. thank you so the chair you had a final yes. question probably 
Uh, hasn't HP Snap purchased homes in the past? And if they did, what was the difference this time? The difference was the, the way the, the, um, the RFP was put together. Um, in the past, it's been a pretty straightforward, here's the total price we're willing to pay for the properties. Okay, who's got the, the best package? Um, this time we were looking, instead of straight dollar amounts, we were looking at the project. We wanted to see who was going to maybe put the most amount of money into the, into the homes so that they had a better quality for the community. Um, we are looking, you know, the word is quality. We were looking for better quality overall. Yeah. Through the chair? Yes. If I may. James, in redoing that, are we giving them a time frame? We'll put it, it back out for a specific, you know, three, four week period again. Yeah, but I mean when, for, for development or redevelopment. Yeah, so they're typically supposed to have it ready for reoccupation within a year. Okay. Can I ask how long has it been since this bid went out? Um, you know, I don't have that date offhand right but now. But we're over the, we are well over the year, are we not? Since we purchased the properties, yeah, because it took us a while to, to put together the RFP and then okay. get to this. But nobody else is, we own the properties. We don't have a time frame. We could, theoretically, we could sit on these properties for yeah. as long I as I was just like. wanting the, the public to realize yeah. that, that, that we're being active and that's why we are doing right. this. Okay. Any other questions? Hearing, hearing none, be it, re, be it resolved that the mayor and city council for the city of Lincoln Park hereby approve the in no no I'm just going to call the roll on that last one council persons Ross yes Tobin yes Bear yes Dupre yes Salcedo yes Soar yes and Mayor Hitchens okay yes go on to the next one okay uh, next one is another city manager yes thank you um, so tonight, we are looking for you to approve an engagement letter with Miller Canfield to be our um, Brownfield redevelopment attorney. Um, as we go through this process, we need some outside legal help um, to navigate the Brownfield process. And then also, as we go through negotiating the Brownfield repayment plan, um, this one's likely going to be pretty straightforward. I don't anticipate too much, um, too money, too much cost as far as legal fees go, but we, we did want to bring in an expert. Um, and the guy we're looking at through Miller Canfield, Matt Greenberg, he has extensive experience. He was an environmental um, consultant before he finished law school, got into environmental law. Um, Miller Canfield has been forever our um, bond counsel, and our bond counsel, Steve Mann, actually recommended him. So we're looking for an improvement of the an approval of the engagement letter tonight. So be it resolved that the mayor and city council of Lincoln Park hereby approve the engagement letter to Mayor Miller Canfield as a special brownfield counselor for the city. I'll move. Support. To the chair. Yes. Um. So in the in the letter that's attached to this. Um, it says that there is a, um, a document attached to this letter. There's no document. Um, that document is just their standard terms of agreement. The uh, payments are supposed to be in by this. The, the stuff that isn't, uh, it's the same thing we have with them with the, uh, the bond council agreement. Um, it, I, it's just not attached. But it... Isn't it something that we should read? It says that we should read it. I mean, the same contract as every time. Of the yeah, it's it's no different than the contracts we've had in the past with them. Any other questions? To the chair, didn't we have the brownfield squared away at this particular site? We're pretty close. Um, that's why it, they've they've submitted a brownfield plan. We just we needed the outside eyes on it to make sure things were being done right and that we were on the right track. Also, one of the most important steps, especially from the city standpoint, is the repayment agreement, um, and we want to make sure our backs are covered. Okay. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? Then I will call for the roll. Council Persons Bear. Yes. Ross. Yes. Dupre. Yes. Salcedo. Yes. Soar. Yes. Tobin. Yes. And Mayor Higgins. Yes. 
And with that, we will go to the city manager report. All right, thank you again. Um, just a couple things tonight. Uh, first, first meeting of the month, so I'm gonna recognize some anniversaries here. In the fire department, Samantha Poole is hitting her one year. Um, in DPS, Braylon Smith also hitting a one year anniversary. And the PD, Tom Mandernock is hitting uh, five years with the department. Uh, Noah Anderson in the PD is also at a year. Uh, Corinne Del Rue in the PD Records Department, she's hitting her five years as well. And then also in the Fire Department, Irinda Lockhart has been uh, 10 years, according to the report I've got. Um, so congratulations to all of them. Um, Mayor mentioned tonight about the, the grants that departments are getting and all of the, the hard work that departments are, are going through with these. A couple, couple good, good things coming, I think. Uh, number one, we have received the funding for the pension grant. Um, so that is significant. Uh, both systems now should be approximately 60% funded, uh, which is something we didn't think we'd see for another 20 years. So that is a huge, huge jump forward. Um, also, in the next few months, I don't have anything definitive yet because um, things have to be finalized, but there should be some really good news coming regarding the pump stations um, in the next few months here at the latest. So look forward to that uh, when we get a chance. Uh, last week, we had an issue that we had to close City Hall's parking lot between City Hall and the library. Uh, one of the catch basins had essentially deteriorated and created a, an issue of undermining underneath some of the concrete. Uh, we had put it out, we were gonna be closed uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, reopened Tuesday. Thankfully, the, the contractor was really good and really quick. We were able to actually reopen it uh, early Friday afternoon, so that was a good thing, but it's open now. Everybody, everybody can be, be rest assured that it's safe to drive on. Um, lastly, uh, in the next couple of weeks here, beginning September 12th, uh, Southfield between Fort Street and River Drive is going to be undergoing some uh, resurfacing through the county. Uh, it's going to definitely cause some, some headaches during this time, so if you have to travel that way in the next couple of weeks, starting September 12th, uh, make sure you're aware and allow a little extra time. Uh, with that, I am happy to answer any questions anybody might have. To the chair? Yes. Um, I'd like to know if there's something we can do for the traffic lights at uh, Dixon Southfield and Ford Street in Southfield. Um, I think it's important for our citizens that they be able to function throughout our city during power outages. And, you know, we should have a backup system. I don't know if solar is the way to go. I don't know. I, I've looked into some, my, uh, some things. I find it to be fairly reasonable. Staff, can we can start looking into some backup solutions. I appreciate that. Writing Thank that down you. right now. Do the chair? Yes. I, I got two things. Uh, can we get um, like a report update on the ARPA money and what it's earmarked for and where each item stands as far as um, where um, what grants are needed, what grants we've applied for, where the grants stand, where the supply chain issues are, um, dates that we're going to be starting projects or where they're at, um, like you, for the website if that's been started, just an overall view of where everything is so yeah. we, we know where we stand. And also, um, I know that with the, um, the DBB properties, um, the timeline when we approve a demolition, what is the timeline once we approve it, a normal <coughs> timeline for a demo to happen? Yeah. I mean, yeah, please. 21 day of appeal after council makes a decision, which comes usually 21 days after the Dangerous Buildings Board makes a decision, and then they order the shutoff notices. The 21 day appeal is to appeal to the circuit court. If they don't ex exercise that appeal, then the city orders shutoff notices. Mr. Kazoo may know, Mr. Myers here too? Three months, four months, am I in the ballpark? Probably four. All right. Four months. Yeah. Okay. Unless it's a, an ultra hazardous condition, then we'll get an immediate order. Okay. I just think because, you know, in this with nine months with no, 
nothing happening with our contractors. I think that that's very excessive and it, it's endangering to our residents and, and the public in general. If it's dangerous and it's nine months and there's no action taken when we've done our due diligence to get this done, um, I, I would like to see that this not happen again, that it not take that long once we are in that position. And, and if I may, that's exactly why we've, we've come with this right. new, new process is instead of doing a new bid every time we get the demolition order, now we have a standing contract with the demolition contractor so that we can just call them up and say, all right, we're ready to go. Let's get this one on the schedule. Should cut down on some of that time. Um, we've had some really bad luck with the last contractor, unfortunately. Really bad luck. Um, and they become unresponsive and very difficult to work with. So hopefully that doesn't become a trend and things can well, I improve want to thank for Mr. sure. Thank Myers for coming up with this new plan idea <laughs> because uh, this is something that, you know, everything takes a long time. All the channels we have to go through and everything that we have to cover and, and finding different ways to approach this so that we don't end up in this situation again is admirable. So thank you, sir. That's all I have. To the chair. <coughs> Jason was next. Um, I just want to, uh, a couple, two more updates on the National Fitness Center and the Animal Shelter, which I know I tend to ask a lot about. So National Fitness Center, the last day I asked Brandon towards the end of last week, I think they were targeting the next two weeks for being able to be opened. Um, I know everything's been poured, the concrete's ready to go, um, they just need to do the install, as far as I understand. Um, we've kicked around some fun ideas for maybe a, a grand opening, but more information on that as it comes. I don't want to spoil any surprises. Um, and then the animal shelter was rolling pretty hard. I think they're still going pretty, pretty smoothly. Um, you know, it's it's a big building. If you've been by there, it's it's a big building. Um, so oh, I, I remember yeah. I remember the specs for it when right. we approved it. So um, yeah, and it, it's definitely different seeing it on the paper and, and trying to conceptualize and then actually seeing, yeah, this is this is a pretty big, pretty big building here. Um, so I, it's still a little ways out. I know some on staff is more optimistic than others about it being potentially done in about a month or two. I I, I think we've got a good couple months still um, before it's completed. Uh, all the concrete work will be done well before the I, they, winter cutoff. I right? think they're going to be at the point they're going to do all, be doing all interior work okay. by that point. Cool. It looks like that all the walls are up and uh, the electricity has been brought to it. It hasn't been on, but so the minor, the, the major stuff is done now. It's the finishing. That's all. Thank you, Tracy. I think you're next. <coughs> Um, James, I was just looking for the current CFO list from the last yep. couple months. So we actually I had a conversation with uh, with John Myers, the building official, about that. Um, CFO list has slowed up significantly, kind of due to the due diligence and the work on the, the part of the building department getting to what is essentially 95% compliance in the, the major corridors. Um, but I think we'll be able to get something soon. Uh, for the most recent, maybe a six-month update. Okay. It, instead of coming monthly, I think it's probably going to be a longer stretch of time, but a little more comprehensive. Because we've had most of the renewals done. Right? Yeah. Okay, so there'll be actual, probably more. Pro we'll we'll be starting to see more of the new businesses okay. now okay. as they open up, Thank for you. sure. Anything else? Well, then we'll ask the police chief to step up. I understand you have some good info, uh, some good news for us for Monday. Yeah, right. <laughs> this is my first report, so <laughs> sit back and enjoy. <laughs> um, this will be for April, May, and June on the past quarter. For a patrol division, we currently have 21 patrol officers working the road. Um, this number includes Officer Ziesmer, who's going to be leaving us next week. He's moving to another department, as well as Officer Amros, who just got hired in last last month. Um, during the past quarter, the Road Patrol took uh, 9,978 calls for service. This is almost 1,000 calls more than the previous quarter. Um, they handled 251 accidents, issued 2,148 violations, made 517 arrests, and issued 2,148 violations while working on selective enforcement of traffic. 
Uh, the detective bureau is uh, currently consists of a lieutenant, a sergeant, and one patrol detective. They investigated 340 complaints, 48 complaints, closing 256 of them. Our ordnance pride division investigated 1,606 complaints and issued 553 violations. Uh, in July, again, the code enforcement and pride moved to the building department, and we currently have two animal control slash parking enforcement officers, one of which was just hired in July. Our animal shelter, we're working with one full-time and two part-time employees uh, during that past quarter. I brought in 66 dogs, returned 34 of those to the owners, transferred uh, seven out, adopted 10, and as of today, we are jam-packed with 14 dogs in the shelter. Um, community policing, our Sergeant Mueller, uh, he retired in July after 26 years, service Sergeant Nicholas, replaced him, so looking forward to what he's going to bring to the to the department and city. Um, in April, um, we attended several autism acceptance events. Uh, police department sold some patches, um, police patches with a autism symbol on it and um, collected nearly $500, which we turned over to Mixter School. Um, we assisted the uh, Lincoln Park Little League opening day with their parade, attended the Cinco de Mayo Festival um, passing out swag and promoting our department, trying to get somebody hired. Uh, continue on on in May, we um, attended, Meyer had a Cinco de Mayo um, event. It's the second one, and we were again there promoting the department, trying to uh, get some potential employees. Um, we attended the career day at the Lincoln Park High School. Um, promoting the police department and our great profession. We assisted in the Memorial Day Parade, partnered with the Red Cross um, during a blood drive and collected 42 uh, blood donations at that. In June, we attended the car school on end of year carnival, had a couple officers get into the dunk tank and the kids really enjoyed getting them wet. Um, Red officers also assist in the Lincoln Park High School 5K. They do every year at the end of the school year. Um, our Special Operations Bureau consists of one uh, sergeant and two patrol detectives. They investigated 84 complaints, pursued 47 forfeiture complaints, and seized $72,136 in cash. Uh, traffic unit, we currently have one sergeant who's assigned to that unit. He investigates traffic complaints throughout the city. Um, he issued 223 violations, towed seven vehicles. Uh, for our outlook, obviously we need police officers. We are down eight officers right now. We have one more leaving on Tuesday. Um, the shift numbers are decreasing uh, to our minimum manning of four officers uh, per shift. That makes things very, very difficult um, and unsafe. Uh, more than half of our 21 officers we have working the road right now are, have less than three years on, which is uh, not much experience in a busy city that we are. Um, two recruits are graduating, this is good news, from the police academy uh, this coming Friday. Uh, they will be sworn in Monday, so this is the official invite, 3.30 p.m. on Monday. Mayor Higgins is going to swear the officers in. Um, they will begin their FTO program once they start. The FTO program runs about four months. Uh, we continue to receive applications, but a uh, few of those are certified and or viable candidates. Uh, if we can find recruits, Washtenaw Police Academy is sponsoring another uh, academy starting in November. Um, if we were able to put some people through there, um, and they pass the academy, get through FTO, uh, they wouldn't be counted as manpower till like July or August. So it's a long process away before we can even start counting these uh, officers as, and manning. Uh, we previously had uh, places uh, or spaces reserved in the Macomb Police Academy and the Oakland Police Academy. And uh, those both started in August and we were unable to find anybody viable to send through those. So very, very tough out there. Uh, we're hopeful that Washtenaw County will 
um, we'll be able to get some people and get them in there. We're going to fill it if we if we can. Um, in addition to police officers, we're, we've recently interviewed um, for a part-time record clerk and receiving applications for part-time animal shelter attendants, which we'll be uh, interviewing later this week. As mentioned above, we recently hired a new animal control um, officer, and um, that was after the pride restructuring. Um, talk about the animal shelter. Uh, it is moving along. Um, they put up some interior walls today, or they got um, framing for interior walls, so not just block right now. So I think that's a step in the, in the right direction. Phase one of the police department renovations is moving along. Um, we're um, just about ready, I think, um, to start moving stuff in, just a couple things. So we are moving forward on that. Um, with the animal shelter, there are gonna, there is gonna be lots and lots and lots of animals. You know, we currently have 14. Um, we're gonna have kennels for 40, and cats. Looking at the blueprints, it looks like about 60. So that is something that we're gonna have to start as a city start looking for uh, some potential bodies to go in there. Our, our one full-time and two part-time are not going to be able to handle that. So something to think about. Um, through the last quarter, lots and lots of training. If anybody would like to see it, I'll send it to you. I don't want to bore everybody with all the stuff, but our guys are very trained, very well trained, and uh, we're putting out great officers. We just need to keep them. If anybody has anything, I'd love to answer those questions. At first, I want to uh, say thank you, um, number one, for the backpack giveaway was, was spectacular. And then also the blood, uh, you, did, you, you did the uh, blood bank, and uh, that was spectacular, too. I know that was uh, his first one as, a, as the public site, site of the police, and he did a great job. He's really taken a lot of pride in it, and um, again, looking forward to what he's going to bring to the city. Okay, uh, Tracy. Um, Scott, do you know if we'll be taking e-course animals from Rouge, being that they're always overcrowded? Rouge? We have, that's I don't know. know. I think we'll cross that. <laughs> uh, okay. We have enough problems getting rid of our own. But I think I think what I've learned so far is um, all these shelters, we play nice with each other. Yeah. So if we can help somebody out, we can help them out. And if somebody can help us out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. To the chair. Yes. As well as with the animal shelter, you said we might have to look at adding paid staff to handle the big increase in animals. Is like a volunteer program a, per, a potential part of that? I know other shelters have, and again, um, this is somewhat new for me. We've been trying to, um, Deputy Chief Coulter and I are trying to reach out to some other shelters to see what's going on. We've been kind of busy the last couple weeks, but that's the plan, just to, no sense recreating anything if we can uh, get a good copy from something. But I believe we had some issues with volunteers before, um, and that may have caused some problems, but I don't think uh, it's all new to me, so we'll give it a shot. And to piggyback on what the mayor just said, the presence that you had at Lincoln Park Days was at, was incredible. I met many new officers that I had never never seen before. And Me were, too, every time I walked down the hall. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they were all coming in after already working a 12-hour shift, and they were still taking the extra shift at Lincoln it's Park coffee. Days. So that, yeah, coffee. Yeah, and coffee that, that and caffeine. Yeah. Very admirable. Yeah. Thank you. I will pass the word on. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, at Lincoln Park Days, there was a there was an altercation that could have grown into something big. Um, and two, two younger officers um, went in, took care of it, and it was, you know, very good job. Good. I could not have, you know, expected it to be handled, handled that quickly. Um, just couldn't say better more about it. I'll pass on some attaboys. Okay. That's what we do. Um, but also, um, while we're talking about the dog pound, the, the, the dog shelter, um, we had, when we started building this and started talking about it, we had talked about maybe bringing in a partner for another city. Um, is there still any talk about that? I don't know. That would be, I guess, up to everybody up here moving forward. I think we could potentially fill up pretty fast. 
through the chair? Yes. If I could ask Chief a question. Yes, ma'am. Chief, are our officers still doing the crossing guard duties as well? Uh, they will. Today school started, so I think students are back in, so, so we, we will be doing that. We'll have two officers doing crossing detail every single day, or twice a day. So we've kind of given up on trying to find people to... Yeah, we... Them. We don't have those positions posted. I haven't <laughs> seen an application or even heard of one in um, a few years. Well, thank you. On top of everything else, thank you. If you're interested, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, through the chair, Your Honor, yes. I'll probably a series of questions here, Chief Levis. Thank you for your report. 9,000 calls. That's a lot of calls. But in regards to the animal shelter, do you guys advertise adoptions besides on Facebook? Do you advertise anywhere else where come adopt a dog at Lincoln Park? Because I don't see On Facebook, if you follow Facebook. I don't follow Facebook. The girls do a fabulous mm -hmm. job on that. Very so if you're not on Facebook, mm -hmm. you're not sure if there's any adoptions. That's my point, right? I just, I mean, how, does the, how do we let the whole city know that there's dogs available for adoption if you're not on Facebook? That's my question. So I get you can answer that later. That's okay. I just, I'm not sure if we're advertising well enough. Councilwoman Dupree, any yes. suggestions? Yes, there are many um, different groups and, and uh, petfinder.com there's many things they're many into that. yes okay. they're all listed all all through that because I mean if we have 14 dogs let's find them home somehow so like I mentioned, they're, and they're trying very hard they really you. are That's what I like to hear because I don't see it advertised all these shelters play nice together oh. and everybody's trying to help right. each other out we all work to together to, to make it happen also you know I might as well just jump to the to the question on this one in regards to officers leaving do you ever do like an exit interview on why are you leaving? You I do. I've done. done to your I, I started that with, um, I think, three of my last. Can you like elaborate? I mean, I, I let the citizens and let the council even know what's usually, and be blunt, what's usually the reason that these officers are leaving? Is it money pension here and they want to move? Money, pension, and benefits. Again, um, our officers are very, very busy. Uh, if you do the math, we got 21 officers on the road handling almost 10,000 calls in three months. They get a lot of experience really fast. And um, some of these other cities that aren't anywhere near as busy as us uh, look to our our officers uh, as leaders. No you know, they pay more, they take less calls. and. I just want to let everyone know that because I, I feel you. We go up and down with the officers. I know we train them. We send them to college or whatever, train them, and then they leave. And it's unfortunate. But all right, I think uh, I think that answers all my questions. I, I wish I could talk some more about it. But that's all I have, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Now we'll work open to citizen communications. Is there anybody who would like to talk to this body? Leslie Lynch Wilson, step forward. By the way, folks, um, two weeks ago at the farmer's market, I was a pleasure to uh, give uh, Leslie <laughs> a key to the city for all she, all she has Thank done. Thank you. Thank you. So, so now it's September. And I just want to let you know we've, the farmers market has two events coming up this month. So this pa this coming Sunday, September 10th, we are doing a plant swap with Lincoln Park Garden Club, um, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. So if you have plants, your garden's overgrown with some plants, um, dig them up, divide them, bring them to the market, and um, there will be other plants you can take home. Then Sunday, September 17th, we're doing our Fall Harvest Festival. It'll be 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. We'll have free cider, free donuts, free corn roast while supplies last. Um, so we'll start the cider and donuts, 11 a.m. Noon, we'll start the corn roast. And while you're at the market, there's plenty of uh, produce now that's um, that has come in. So be sure to shop with the farmers and the specialty food vendors and any craft. And we accept uh, EBT, Double of Food Bucks, Credit Debit, WIC Project Fresh, Senior Project Fresh, in addition to cash. And we're just in downtown Lincoln Park um, on the vacant lot, you know, where the Mellis Newspapers building used to be, on the east side of Fort Street, one and a half blocks north of Southfield Road. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to talk to this body? 
that, we're going to go on to council reports and oral reports. We'll start with our council president. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll make it brief tonight since we're on a good time frame here. How about the firefighters grant? Congratulations, Chief, on that. Uh, the grad sale weekend is this weekend. I'll be out on my bike. I'll be looking for good, uh, good treats. So everybody lower the price when you see me. Uh, also, the last concert at the band shell. That's always a nice treat. The weather should be cooperative. And that's all I have, Your Honor. Thank you. That's it. Um, next up, Gracie. Um, there's a lot of fall events to enjoy, and I hope to see some, some of you out having fun at the garage sales. I plan to attend and shop, shop, shop. And that's all for me for this month. So good night and God bless. Mm -hmm. um, well, I just, I hope everybody had a good time at Lincoln Park Days. I know I did. Um, I saw lots of smiling faces, and the Exchange Club would like to just thank everybody here for the hands up this year that we really appreciated it. Thank you very much. Um, Thursday's concert, Little Davy and the Diplomats with our very own Mr. Ed Zellman. Yay. It's always a fun time. Um, and September 9th at 1 o'clock at the Historical Museum, the new pavers will be installed. So if you can, please come out and um, see everybody. And everybody have a safe summer. Enjoy the weather that's going to be cooling off soon. And that's all I have. Thank you. Lillian, you're up. Thank you, Your Honor. If I could please just start with... Um, James, would you please repost the crossing guard positions? I'm, I'm just thinking that with the time that's passed and we're getting more applicants for different things, maybe somebody will be interested. Thank you. And I want to touch on the Historical Museum's newsletter. There are several, several dates that I would like for you to jot down and join us for. And the first one being Saturday, as Councilwoman Tobin mentioned, September 9th at 1 p.m. At the museum grounds will be the Heritage, pa um, Heritage Plaza Paver dedication for this year as it was postponed. And then we have um, Rapp Schools exhibit opening reception on Sunday, October 8th from 2 to 4 at the museum. And this is celebrating Rob School's 100 years. On Saturday, October the 14th, if you're available from 10 to 1, the museum uh, grounds work day, um, we will need volunteers. If you would like to help, you could bring your gloves. Um, and and some help with you. <laughs> um, they always provide refreshments too afterwards. Um, Wednesday, October the 25th at 7 p.m., the society has restarted their evening Wednesday evening programming. And on October the 25th will be Henry Ford, his life timeline present presentation by Mark Campbell of the Henry Ford Heritage Association. And that program starts at 7 p.m. And then Saturday, November the 11th at 11, as the museum does every year, will be the Lincoln Park Historical Society and Museum's uh, bell ringing ceremony for uh, Veterans Day. Um, let me see. And then just so that, so that you're aware, right now um, on view th uh, through the end of September at the museum is their current exhibit titled 100 Years of Communication. Um, and then if I could touch on the Fall Mom, f fall mom Fundraiser. <laughs> Um, this benefits the Lincoln Park Animal Shelter, and the deadline to order your moms will be September 20th, and delivery September the 26th. And according to the flyer, please contact uh, Swartz at 313-970-5269. And that is all I have. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Jason, you're up. Um, I just like the uh, give another shout out to how very successful Lincoln Park Days was and uh, like we saw with the uh, police chief how 
how uh, the police department contributed to a great event, but there was also Parks and Recs. They they put in uh, a, lot, a lot of time that weekend. Uh, I know Dennis, Austin, I got to meet a couple new staffers at the Parks and Recs table. They, uh, they brought back the, the kids' uh, play area and, or field day on Sunday. That was great. Um, the exchange club did a phenomenal job with organizing it. Um, I was there pretty late on Saturday, and I can attest that you could see the wear of terror on people like Councilwoman Tobin or former Mayor Tom Carnes. Who during that week, and he did seem like a constant ball of energy, always moving from one activity to another that needed to be done. And uh, it was my first time there as a city councilman uh, at the hands of the city table. And I certainly enjoyed myself, and lots and lots of people had, had a whole lot of fun. The changes they made to the entertainment and beer tent area was just incredible, having it in the back of of uh, Youth Center Park now. It really opened it up for the vendors and the carnival to not like be drowned out by all the music. So that's all. Continue to enjoy our great, our great fall event and stay safe everyone. Thank you. Mr. Zor, you're up. Uh, first I'd like to say for the Lincoln Park um, uh, Police Department uh, and the um, dedication of the 11 uh, with Officer Stearns being part of that this Saturday at 1 o'clock at the museum. Um, and then I'd also, if I'm not mistaken, Saturday is the Ecorse Creek, the last Ecorse Creek cleanup? Yeah, that should be this Saturday. Yep. For, do you know what the... That's from 9 a.m. 9 until about noon. Thank you. And then we also have, uh, I want to welcome back all the staff and students to our school system. Tomorrow will be the official start of our schools. And the assessor's office is doing what they have been doing all along, working hard and diligent, trying to keep our taxes flowing. With that, I'm done, Your Honor. Thank you. And I remind everybody, uh, Davy and the Diplomats, also known as the Zelenek Band, will be there on Thursday. Come on out, have a good time. And with that, I will call for so move support. support. Councilperson Salcedo, yes. Dupre, yes. Bear, yes. Ross, yes. Soar, yes. Tobin, yes. And Mayor Higgins, yes.